There's also very another interesting statement here. And again, uh, it, it, this is, you know, what he, at the beginning of the introduction, his students write that. At the beginning, again, he's teaching people in, this is, this is all extracts from notes or points he mentioned during his Bukhari class. So you already got a class full of students who've already studied all the deen, and the most of them aren't deen. So he goes, at the beginning of the year, from the end of the year, beginning to end of the year, just a mindset would change how they would understand deen and how they would approach deen. So again, this is very interesting. He says here, sometimes, to, to talabul ilm, seek knowledge. But the thing is like, the main, main things are already in the books. What you have, for example, a new scenario, COVID came. So how do you deal with COVID? Like that's never happened before, isn't it? That's a research, yes, you need to do research for that. Yes, but guess what, that's something to research. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a panic. But research, what do we do? How do we attack? What, what do we do with this? The, the injections, the masjid, clothes, not clothes. Um, travel, face mask, distancing the masjid, stuff. These are all like unprecedented. That's, you need to research that. But other things are, like almost everything is almost researched. Yes, they got new, new masla, like medicine, or new masla regarding, I don't know, space travel or something. But yes, or, or transactions, a lot of internet transactions, a new phase of form. So if it's new, completely new, you have to do research. But it's sometimes like, it's been there for like centuries. Yes? So if you do a new research, if it's a new research for the sake of knowledge, that's also beneficial. Like we want to know as much as possible. But if you try and do a research which ends up putting others in difficulty and confusion, it's not anything good. Are you following? He says, Bashnacha here, stay yourself from this. This is very important. And he gives an example. He goes, Pagri, Kitne Gaz Ki Hui. Kiti. Like for example, if you want to be an Imama, even last time I told you, is it is it a Sunnah or is it an Ada? Is it a Sunnah where you get reward for it? Is it actually Ibadah itself? Or is it just simply the Prophet used to wear it and you be following him in love? I explained that before anything. Now we say, okay, like how, how long, what's a Sunnah left? Should be like, this is called a Gaz from here to here. How many Zerat are supposed to be? Like, what's a Sunnah of this? Yes? The buttons, how did the Prophet raise buttons? Was the buttons at the back, buttons at the front? Buttons on the left side or the right side? Two buttons or three buttons? Yes? Then he gives another example. How is the topi supposed to be? Is it supposed to be hard or is it supposed to be soft? Pointy up, flat, round? It should be split into how many sections? How is it stitched? Uh, he goes, um, this, the Sharia left these things this for us. There's no point going into all of this. He goes, he goes, he says here, uh, when the Sharia has just said, just leave these things, just leave it as it is. Don't make things and trying to make things, oh, this is against the Sunnah, it's against the Sunnah. Like you have to, uh, Jumba is against the Sunnah, or Jumba is the Sunnah, and the Kurta is the Sunnah, Kurta is not the Sunnah. These are all the libas of the Salihin, which one you want to wear Don't try to like, you know, make things too difficult. He's saying like, like find a new research to which, uh, and it's causing more like confusion. People are like trying to, some people are still struggling. Again, in the academic field, if you're in a classroom, I do some research, brilliant, keep it in the classroom, that you know, we found this Rewaya and all these Rewaya put together, it seems that this is what the Prophet used to, that's in the class is fine. But you go out and say, oh this is not, this, and you say, this is not Sunnah. Now some ulama are all doing it, some are not doing it, you are causing more harm than good. And it's not even like, uh, like a, like a Masla which is sure, like these are Rewaya, like, it's not in Bukhari, it's not in Muslim, it's not in the Qutub al-Sitta, it's not in those side books, we don't even have a Sunnah for it, and making a big issue about it, that's against the Sunnah. It's like this new research you're trying to do is not really beneficial. And sometimes, not all the time, we shouldn't judge anybody, but for ourselves. There's sometimes and people do this why? To feel relevant. If I, come, if I say perform salah, it's like, yeah, same thing. You're not a big muhaqiq, you're not a big researcher. Say make sure you keep it fast. You know, do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wake up for the hajjud. Spend a bit of time doing things. Do khidmah of your parents. You're not gonna have CNN flash breaking news, new research. Meaning, you won't get, you know, you're not going to get forwards, those are not the forwards. So something that's easy to get street cred is come up with these new things. So I'm not saying everybody who does this, but if you do it in classrooms, brilliant. Is it going to bring benefit to the ummah or cause confusion in the ummah? It's cause confusion, let's leave it. And keep the research to the, the academic fields. Because in the link, and he says here, خاص طوابت جن کامو یا باتوں کا نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا نہ حکم دیا نہ ان کی ترغیب دی Prophet never told us to do this, he never encouraged us to do this. It is something mentioned in the books of thing. So again, you have to understand it in the context here. Yes, it doesn't mean all oh, like, you know, just say, like, Deen is very loose and it's made everything loose. But it is very that sometimes people go overboard. And the research is good, but research which is trying to cause the confusion and amongst the ummah is not benefit. Yes, you understand? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand this. So this is, you see now, he's a great, and again, not a liquor. Somebody let me on YouTube, picked up my camera and tried to confuse us on YouTube. This is uh, Mufti Mahmoud Ashraf Usman, Rahmatullah. He's Mufti Taki Sab's nephew. 
So he spent time with his grandfather Mufti Shafi Sahib Rahmatullah. So imagine how much time he spent with him. And not only he was, he was elder and he got time with him. He spent time with Rasulullah Khan Sahib Rahmatullah. Then he spent time with Dr. Habda Arifi Rahmatullah. All of Hazrat Han Rahmatullah and his senior uh, Khalifa and his senior students. Then he asked, until he died, he always had different mashayikh to spend time with. And in the end, he was sitting in Karachi with Mufti Sahib. So you can see how grounded he is in his knowledge and his understanding. And some of the things he's given here, again, the point that he's given is he's trying to give us understanding that. He's even got a book at the end called here. It's not been published yet, but it says here. Uh, it says here that under publishing is. It says, Deen Dari me Ghulu se bachi. If you're trying to be pious, don't go, over, don't go to don't do Ghulu. Don't become like extreme in this. So he's just trying to say sometimes like, those who practice in Deen, Deen is very simple. Perform your Faraid, perform your Sunan. And as much as you can do, fulfill those along with fulfilling people's rights. And inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've seen from sin, obviously. And Allah will open up your things and have a good heart. Be humble, be kind, be loving, be caring. And inshallah, ask, sit in the company of the ulama, sit in the durus, sit in the lectures, ask where you're not sure. And inshallah, will do this. Yes? Uh, Hazrat Tanu Rahmatullah was mentioned as well. Like, he goes at the fuqaha, I've never seen this masala. He said it, he's seen it somewhere, he taught it a long time. He goes that if somebody, I can't remember the word he used, but a very, very small item, like a piece of wheat or like a piece of corn, and you do the tashir of it, if you have a dal, that something is lost. Like let's say, for example, you've you got a camera, you've got the microphone here, you've got a book here, or 10 pound, and you go about saying, oh, no, who's is this, who's is this, who's is this, I found some lost property. That's a mistake, isn't it? You can't just take it, you have to find, find an owner. But if it's something so insignificant that you know the person doesn't want it, like you found a P, one P, or you found, like, I don't know, like a, a cup of a drink bottle or something, and you do tashir of it, the, 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 he said, the fuqaha said, this person deserves, deserves the punishment for the tashir. Because he's causing fitna and fasad. Why, you know that people don't want this. Who, who's enough for a bottle cup? I say, oh, whose bottle cup is this? Or whose plastic bag is this? You know, plastic bags on the road. If you're tashir of that, he deserves a punishment. Because he's being stupid. And he's causing fitna. That. This is not taqwa. This is, this is what we call it a diary of taqwa. You've got taqwa kahiza. You've got diary of taqwa. It's not taqwa. Do you understand? This is, so this is why he's trying to say that. You have to have moderation. So it doesn't mean that you just commit all sins anyhow. Like, oh, everything is easy. It just means that sometimes you have to, especially when people are studying, people who are in the religious spheres, don't make, um, go out and um, Deen is not difficult, it's very simple The Prophet has made it very clear for us And keep um, things simple And inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will uh, Explain things in an easy way Do not create circumstances which causes difficulty and hardships for people Subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi Wa nashadu la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayhi